In lesson 2.4, students experiment with clay and wood and see that clay sinks and wood floats regardless of the amount of material used. Students will see that clay is more dense than water and wood is less dense than water and that density has something to do with the mass or weight of the substance compared to its size. So let's take a look. Students will take a piece of clay and put it in water and see that it sinks. And then they'll take about half the amount make it into a little clay ball and put it in the water again and see that it sinks. And they'll take a half again and see that it sinks. And they'll continue to do this and they'll see that no matter how small and light the piece of clay is, it sinks every time. It's because the density of the clay is greater than the density of the water no matter what size piece they experiment with. Another way to think about whether a substance will sink or float is to compare an amount of substance to the same amount of water. If the substance is heavier than the same amount of water, the substance must be more dense than water. Let's see how this works in an animation. So here, the clay ball sinks in water. So if we use the same amount of clay and water and put them on a scale, the clay is heavier. That means that the clay must be more dense than water. So if you measure the same amount of each one, the one that's heavier must be more dense. Now we have a small amount of clay also sinks. Why is that? Well, let's compare a smaller amount of clay to an equal amount of water, and the clay is still heavier. So clay is still more dense than water, even though there's less of it. And then if you take even a smaller amount and put it in water, it sinks. Let's see if the test that we're doing on the balance shows that it's more dense, and it does. We're comparing an amount of clay with the same amount of water, the clay is heavier, therefore it must be more dense. So density has to do with how heavy something is for its size. In the lesson, you can demonstrate that wood is less dense than water by placing a popsicle stick in water. Kids will see that the popsicle stick floats, and then you can ask, how about if I put a whole bunch of popsicle sticks in? Here's 20 sticks, and that also floats. The reason is that the density of wood is less than the density of water, and therefore wood floats. So let's see this in an animation. So first, a little block of wood is placed in water and it floats. And this should work the same way as the clay, except in reverse. So let's see. If you tested an amount of clay and an equal amount of water and put them on the scale, since the wood floats, the wood should be less heavy, should be lighter than the water. So wood is less dense, Therefore, if you compared the same volume of wood and water, water would be heavier, wood would be lighter. How about if you tried a bigger piece of wood that's heavier? It's also going to float. Does that make sense? Let's see. If we compared a volume of wood to an equal volume of water, the wood is still lighter because density is a characteristic property of the material itself. It doesn't have to do with how much there is. Now you've got a big block that's much heavier than the smallest one, yet, if you compare the large block to an equal volume of water, it's still lighter, because no matter what, wood is less dense than water. There's some important practical applications of the volume and the weight of an object to either increase or decrease its density. In this case, a life preserver adds a lot of volume to an object, in this case a little kid, but not much mass. So if you increase the volume more, you're going to decrease the density. But the opposite of that is with the scuba diver, you want that scuba diver to be able to stay down and not float to the top. So he or she wears a weight belt that adds a lot of mass, but not much volume. So that object, the scuba diver plus the belt, is heavy for its size. So in that case, you increase its density so that it stays below the water surface. It sinks. So NGSS standard 5 PS 1 3 it says make observations and measurements to identify materials based on their properties you can use sink and float or density as a property of a substance every substance has its characteristic density we just looked at two in this experiment clay and wood they're different substances they have different characteristic densities no matter how much of either one you measure for the foundation boxes science and engineering practices planning and carrying out investigations in this case students used smaller and smaller pieces of clay 
that were lighter and lighter, and they saw that each time they put it in water, it sunk to tell them that a characteristic property of clay is that it is more dense than water. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, this idea of measuring a variety of properties can be used to identify materials. Density is one of those properties. And for cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, in this case, students see that the density of a substance compared to the density of water is the cause for the effect of either sinking or floating. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.